this particular project um, and there are several alternatives and I'll do my best to go through all of them just to give you some options so let's start with our supplies you're going to need paint and you have two options um, you can get the acrylic paint um, you can get it from Walmart or your little neighborhood friendly superstore it's cheap 99 um, if you don't already have paint, I would recommend that you get your primary colors, which is blue, yellow, red, black, and white. And that way, even if you're still trying to figure out what design you're going to use or what color you're going to use, with these colors, you can mix it to just about anything. Now, um, I also, an alternative is fabric paint. And... I recommend this because it really depends on the garment that you're painting. Acrylic paint by itself can be kind of stiff. So if you're wanting to paint a t-shirt, I would recommend the fabric paint. But be mindful that um, it is a thinner consistency, so you're going to have to put more coats. Um, another alternative, nice but not necessary, is textile medium. If you have acrylic paint, and you can also get this at Walmart, Michaels, craft shop, so on and so forth. But if you're using a, acrylic paint, this will help soften it in your fabric so that you know it will stand up to washes, it won't crack and fade. Um, you are also going to need your handy dandy X-Acto knife, craft knife, or whatnot, um, because this is, of course, a stencil and you need to cut the things out. Um, pair of scissors. You know, just for the bigger parts, if you need to cut it out and it's not specific, like really small, minute details. Rulers, and I have several. I have this, which is a uh, quilting ruler. I just like it because it's um, a regular ruler. Just also Walmart, very, very easy to find. Amazon, Target, anywhere. Also, you're going to need a palette, especially if you have the primary colors, you need a place to mix it. Um, and if you've ever mixed paint, there is no dis more disheartening feeling than not mixing enough. So, a nice big fat palette to mix your paint. And of course, you need your jacket. Where's my jacket? There's my jacket. Um, this is an Eisenhower. Um, it is a. What's the last one? If you're interested, it is JT75, and this is black, and we have an almost rainbow assortment of colors to choose from. I picked black because I like the way the colors pop against the black background. Um, and last but certainly not least, um, this, this project is not for you to be in your Sunday best, so if you don't have the bummy clothes to wear, then you can get you a handy dandy apron. All right, let's go. Um, so 
I decided to make my design um, on my iPad, and here is what it looked like when I initially completed it. And I was just trying to take note of the little bitty nuancey things, the, the little holes in the O and the Bs and the A, and be mindful of the positive and the negative space. Like, what part do I want to keep? What part do I want to cut away? If you don't want to go that way, you can always just go the traditional route, just pen and pencil and paper. Now, <laughs> I forgot. The most important um, supply that you need for this project is just old, boring freezer paper. And it's important that it says freezer paper, not parchment, not wax, but freezer paper. And you want it to where it's it's shiny on that one side and it's flat on the other. All right, we, we have our design um, to honor and support, you know, the people on the front line. Um, our way of saying, hey, we see you, we recognize you, we appreciate you, um, and we're thinking about you. So our design is complete and you have one or two options. You have to transfer it to the paper. This is the next step, but you have multiple options. Um, I have a cutting machine. I have a Cricut, and you can use your Cricut. I've heard of a Silhouette. I'm sure there is a plethora of cutting machines out there on the market, and they all have their own unique platform. Um, so you can upload your design and tweak it how you need to in order to get it to where it can be cut. And that's what I did with mine today. I created my design. I had it cut out and I put it through the machine. But if you don't have a cutting machine, back to the drawing on paper, pen and paper, pencil and paper. Um, this is also a great opportunity for you to preemptively cut your freezer paper to give you a, a scale, like a set of boundaries for your design. This, this size, which is about, this is about 12 by 12. It's great on the back of a jacket, on a sports bra, not so much. So this is a great opportunity to scale it and think about what you're going with, rather. So we got our design on the paper, we're set to go. Now let's start cutting it out. All right, so 17 years later, we finished cutting it out. Yes, the stencil is done. Um, we have our jacket. We have it in the shirt form, so we have a nice flat surface. Um, first off, make sure you press the jacket with your hot iron, setting on the highest, no steam, to you know erase the creases. The creases are the devil right now. So, and once you do that, um, you're gonna lay your stencil out. Now, if you have a cutting machine, mine is curled up like this because of my cutting machine. Um, and that might not necessarily be the case, but in any event, especially when you're working with round designs, you wanna take care. And this is where the paper is really going to shine. Um, the shiny side of it, the wax side, is going to act as a, a slight adhesive, and it's going to help your stencil adhere to the fabric long enough for you to paint. So, um, when I lay it down, I like to at least get a little piece of the stencil flat, just so I can orient it on my garment. And then, you know, this doesn't have to be a one-time process. You just go in with your iron for a couple of seconds and boom, it's pressed. Guess what? I'm 99% of the way done with pressing my stencil and it's way off this this is where it gets really pretty um this particular paper is very forgiving so if i needed to move it if i needed to reposition it i could just pull it up and repress it just for a couple of seconds and boom it sticks yay 
So let's go ahead and get this pressed. Our stencil is it's stuck to the garment we're ready to paint the first thing you need to do is to quickly put a coat of white paint covering the stencil um, the adhesive is very very light and it will stick long enough for at least one coat of paint and that's all you really need it for Got that coat down thank goodness so once once your paint is down on the jacket you need to let it dry it doesn't have to be a hundred percent dry but it can't be like juicy wet because all of the crisp lines that you just created will bleed so let's see just for the sake of of this particular tutorial I'm going to start to lift it I don't recommend it um, in in practice but let's see what we got here one of the beauty the the beautiful things about having a jacket like this in a primary color especially a black Eisenhower or a white one if the lines don't come out crisp then you have your handy dandy eraser aka the same the paint that matches your background so it can make those lines as crisp as you want make those edges a little more defined if you couldn't accomplish it with the stencil um, I said it before I'll say it again love will come and go but acrylic paint in your fabric is forever that's why it's important for you to have some sort of protective gear on um, if you don't have bummy clothes so if you happen to get the paint on you you're not going to be the big sad but yeah this acrylic paint, acrylic paint is not going to wash out just want to touch just to make sure i got all of the paper out and it looks like i did specifically for the purpose of this diy i completed the jacket because i wanted y'all to get an idea of what it could look like how you could play with it and what you can do with it and um, for our viewer that suggested the yellow there you go um, for the viewer that suggested red this one is not quite complete but there's your red and obviously I am a girl who loves the splatters So another optional tool that you can use, um, if you're at, if you're buying your paint from Walmart, go to the the travel section where they have like the miniature deodorants and and toothpaste and stuff, and get you like the travel empty bottle case, and you can get you a spray bottle, and take your textile medium and your acrylic paint, and this is going to be a two to one ratio because it needs to be watery. I don't, I don't mind getting paint on me, obviously, but you see how thin it is? And then you can go in and spray it like so. Yeah, like create some splatters, increase the drip, which is what I did with the first one and I really like the look of that. So spray that. Into once you're completed, it's completely painted. You want to give it at least 24 hours to dry and set. And the other fun part of this process can happen is you showing off your work. I realize that our time together is coming to a close. Again, I really, really appreciate you being here and letting me share this with you. Um, also, very grateful for the opportunity. Um, if you are one of our essential workers, thank you so much. Thank you for being present. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, fight the good fight. You know, we support you 100%.